So I start with, uh, as he said, a uh, logical effort. What exactly what I am talking about? Uh, all of you are aware these days that there are three kinds of circuits which uh, most industries uh, fab and we use. Uh, depends on the kind of circuit you are using, the design is different. For example, there are three kinds which I am talking is one is called high performance circuits. Essentially, performance relates to speed. Uh, speed means the delay time in the whole logical path. And uh, these circuits require very high frequency system clocks, typically few gigahertz and above. And uh, these are specific designs which require high speeds. And there are designs which requires extremely low power. Okay. So in those designs, maybe speed is given up, but at the cost of speed, maybe you can reduce the power consumption itself. Uh, these are mostly mobile systems, handheld systems, PDAs, mobiles. All these systems require extremely low. But there is a third class also available, which is called low standby power circuits, which essentially like a mobile phone, when it is not in the on mode, it shouldn't consume power. And uh, these are three different classes. So this part of my course, which I'm teaching here, is essentially for the high performance circuits. I'm improving the speed. So I'm not bothered about power as far as this part is concerned, though in real life, I may have to keep optimizing power, area, and speed anyway. But that, uh, assuming that I have enough power with me, and area is not that constrained, I am only trying to play a game on the logical paths where I can improve the speeds. Uh, this lecture will start with few things. I will give some introduction. Partly I have already given. Uh, then I will talk about logical effort estimation for gates, uh, fox, amplifier, chain of stages, branches, and maybe if time permitting, I'll also cover some logical effort for different circuit families, which Professor Sharma has just talked about. I don't think it will have that much time for me, but in case I have, or I may actually refer to the book, which you can have more details. And finally, I'll give some remarks, uh, which is my concluding ones. This is a very interesting figure, which I picked up from Harris, his talk. Uh, Chip designers face a bewildering array of choices, which partly I said something of that. What is the best circuit topology for a function? How large should be transistors? W by L should be how much? And then, how many stages of logic uh, will give the least delay? These are three bewildering in the sense, when you start designing, these should bug you before you actually start designing. So the logical effort is the method which answers some of these queries or some of these questions. Uh, the best part of logical effort is, it is like some kind of what word I always borrow from my colleague Professor Sharma, back of the envelope calculations. What do you mean by back of envelope? Means the calculation should not take more than few lines, okay, and any place you can quickly do some calculations. People always believe that in uh, uh, course or in real life, a circuit can always be designed using uh, standard simulators available like say SPICE or SPICE or whatever it is. But it is not proper to start using simulators without having knowledge what actually you want to design and at what specs. And if you are given those specs and if you are to design something, some basic design has to be started by you which can be modified or optimized for actual performance what you are looking for. So in some sense, basic understanding of the logic design itself helps you to design much better and in a shorter time you can get optimal results. And that's why this kind of effort which I am doing and which I thought I, when I first time heard about this course, I, I had I happened to be in Stanford at those days, maybe 90s, 92 or something. And I met uh, by accident uh, Dr. Harris, who was that time part-time teaching at Stanford this course. and. Uh, I, I happened to be very much impressed when, when we were having a lunch together with my another colleague who brought me there. And then I realized that this is a method which is very powerful, at least for those who want to do circuit designs or logical designs. People who only want to do what we call IP-based designs, maybe this may not be that relevant, but people who are creating IPs themselves, this is a relevant talk for those people. So what is the most important part in this logical design system which we are propagating is it's very simple model of delay we are used. 
as just now said, back up the envelope calculation and very simple ca optimization possible, which is tractable. One can find which parameter I am optimizing and how much should I have. Okay. Uh, actually, it is not that we are doing something new. If you are using Rebe's book or any other book of, let's say, uh, Neil West and Ashrangian or any other book, uh, the methods are same. You know, it's just given like, you know, old wine in a new bottle kind of thing. But it is interesting and you will see what uh, new interesting can be done by simple ideas. And that's what I say when I talk to Harris and he said it is a uh, method suggested by Bob Sproul and uh, Sutherland, Ivan Sutherland. They were both earlier in Cadence and, and also in Sun Systems. And he, Sutherland is still in Sun Systems, he's vice president. So this method ap ap appealed me very much and then I discussed with my colleagues. I got some uh, website. Uh, 15 days website was available and I am the only one probably who downloaded it in that 15 days. So, <laughs> Of course, now the book is available in market. It's a very 100, 200 page book or something and available not very costly either. This cost of course is relative. Some of you may find it uh, cost is what 300 rupees is I feel these days very cheap. So who cares about logical effort? This is what I took from Harris as I said. Circuit designers waste too much time simulating and tweaking the circuits. High speed logic designers need to know where time is going on in their logic, which part is actually having a maximum delay. And CAD engineers need to understand circuits better uh, to build the better tools. Okay. So in all in all, this is an introduction to say why logical effort. Uh, this is also taken from his slides which he very nicely gave me or sent me then. There is some person he named Ben Biddle is a memory designer for a Motorola 68W86 Motorola company's uh, memory unit and it is a used for an embedded processor for automotive applications. Now he says help band Ben design the decoder for a register file. Register file is like a FIFO or a stack maybe one some, one some times. Uh, it has a 32 bit wide length of a word and it has 16 words to store. So to enter this you need a 4 to 16 decoder which is what probably is designed and that's what the uh, specification he gave. Each week presents a load of 3 unit size transistors. Now this number will come back to it what exactly 3 unit size means. Assume that true and complementary inputs of added bits are available. Each input may drive 10 unit size transistors. Uh, so Ben needs to decide how many stages to use, how large should each gate be, and how fast can be how fa fast the decoder can operate. Before I go to speed part, when I am looking for a speed in a CMOS or in a MOS or any logic per se, I am actually looking for most cases a capacity loads, and loads are normally coming from the second stage. The input capacitance or input impedance or load is coming from them. But that apart, there is an interconnect line and there is an output capacitance from the driving stage. So for example, so there are capacitances which are associated uh, with gate to drain, gate to source, bulk, bulk to drain, bulk to source. All these capacitance are shown here and they actually constitute, this is essentially source to uh, bulk is essentially diode capacitance, so means drain to bulk then from gate to drain and gate to source essentially through oxide and also some overlap of that. So these capacitances can be evaluated from MOS devices which is what listed here and once I know what is the net capacitance, so these two capacitance, this capacitance, these two capacitance are essentially what will constitute a load at this point and this is total load what we call. So one can estimate capacitances, but one has to understand that most of this CG4, CG3, uh, many of these capacitances are area dependent. So larger the size of a transistor, W into L will be larger and so is the capacitance is larger. So when I am driving something, what driver is going to drive is decided by what much load it is going to face and what is the size of transistor it has. Now one thing one can understand. Uh, the problem starts if I have an inverter and driving another inverter, it's same load, whatever is input capacitance is probably same as the output capacitance um, uh, load from the other side. 
But if the load is higher, is this current which is given by driver is sufficient to charge those capacitance or discharge those capacitance same times as if it would have been a single inverter or same size inverter. Now this is essentially a timing problem. Now if I want to retain time, I must provide more current. Capacitor charges CdV by dt currents. So if I want larger, uh, I mean smaller time or higher speed, I must put larger currents. Larger currents will come from larger W by Ls. Larger W by L will create larger area. So it will increase the capacitance. So here is a catch. I improved I driving for the next stage, but it, its own input capacitance will increase and successive stages will find it very difficult because every time I push current, I increase size and if I increase size, I increase capacitance for the next stage. So this is an issue which we have to solve. Okay. After all, one cannot say that one can never improve speed because this will always be counterproductive. It's not so very true. So these are something which uh, is an issue. I think this is very popular figure. We are interested in mostly delay time, which essentially relates to both rise time, fall time. And from the 50% points, we calculate TPHL and TPLH. And essentially, as I said, all this game is simple. We are charging a capacitor or a discharging a capacitor through an equivalent resistor. So we all know it is V into 1 e to the power minus T by tau into some voltage up to which you want to charge. Now this gives you roughly 0.69 hours. This is called lump model. So I know roughly if this is the kind of values capacitance and equivalent resistor have, what kind of timing I am looking for. This idea has been taken care in logical effort. Just to give an idea again, the capacitances are computed using the sizes. W is the width. Length is not chosen because length is a part of CGDO is per unit length we define. So if larger the width, larger is the capacitance. You can see all of these values I have specified. Uh, of course, in the gate capacitance, both width and length, total area will come. So in this, so I can I can evaluate CL sum of all these capac relevant capacitance. Please take one simple word in calculation of capacitance that those capacitances at any node whose other terminal is grounded are only ones to be added because otherwise they are not in parallel. If floating capacitance has no connection to the node even if one point is connected. So always see it should at least provide an AC ground if not DC ground. Okay, Then those capacitances should always be added at the node as a parallel capacitances of the all of them together. This fact has to be understood many times you see a capacitance but if it is not getting ground connections through any path it doesn't get charged anyway, so it doesn't actually load you. Okay. Yeah, recently, this morning you must have done some CMOS inverters. Uh, it is always said by CMOS people that the transfer characteristics is size independent or what they say W by L does not play a role. In fact, it does. Okay, We say it's ratio less. It is actually ratioed as far as this transition parts are concerned. Maybe VOH, VOL has no dependence, which is how the definition of ratioed circuits were given. But in reality, one can see if I change the W by L, one or the other P channel or N channel will become stronger and therefore speed will vary depends on the size and that's very crucial for us. So typical inverter characteristics which Prasharma must have done, I just quickly hurriedly say a P channel load this is from say we are transiting from low to high transition. Uh, it normally done from the load side that is the P channel transistor actually is on and channel is off. That's what, okay this is N channel switched off input 0, 0 to less than VT. P channel is fully on initially in saturation, uh, non -saturation, uh, saturation then non saturation or uh, sorry uh, initially non saturation then saturation as V out builds. So this is the path of charging the capacitance. In the case of discharge, uh, when the input has already going from high to low, N channel switched off, uh, P channel switched off, and N channel is now a resistor, and this capacitor discharges. This is essentially simple RC time constant calculations. So all that we did in all the great calculations, that's the figure I'm showing essentially will tell you the logical effort actually uses this much uh, electrostatic, okay, no more and no less, okay. 
So it's not that it can be not be taught at second year or it cannot be taught at uh, MTech level. It is actually true for everyone, even a designer in a company. Again, uh, coming back to basics, uh, switching speed, of course, is limited by time taken to charge discharge capacitance. This is the total response. I say rise time waveform from 10 to 90 percent of steady state value, fall time from 90 to 10 percent, and delay, of course, the time difference between input and transition and 50 percent of the output transitions. And we know the propagation delay is the average of low to high and high to low. This low to high will be different from high to low, depends on the size of P channel and N channels. And one upon delay, of course, is the speed. Uh, this is a standard formulation which all books give, how to calculate for given input pulse from 0 to VDD or VDD to down. VTOP is the threshold of a P-channel device at zero bias. Uh, right now, we are assuming no bias dependence. In normal CMOS case, if the substrate are properly connected, it will not have any bias effects. So, VT can be assumed constant. So we can calculate TPLH, we can calculate TPHL, and if we do so, we calculate the propagation delay. So what exactly is delay optimization? Here is what essentially I say. If I want to optimize the delay in a circuit or any category, I break into two categories. One, I can choose the size, W and L or W by L essentially. Uh, gate size selection, okay. What is the gate size essentially I mean? Uh, you know, what kind of, you know, if you see a standard cells, they say it is 1x, 2x, 4x, amount of current it can drive, okay, that is called gate sizing. And then there is a transistor sizing. So, two things we look into it when we say which gate to choose and what are the sizes in those transistors we have. Uh, we can see that different driving strength IP cells are available for a, almost all blocks, okay. The current synthesizing tools do a good job on this part of it. Actually, gate size selection is very good, very simple, and you can always pick up the cell which you want, okay. But the, if you are doing a custom design, then this is not known. So, actually, you are designing from transistors, and if you are designing from transistor, the size of the transistor is essentially somewhere dependent on the even process. What kind of, you are working on 90 nanometer, we are working 65 nanometer, so values are different for different cases. So you need to optimize delays. Obviously, one can appreciate this fact that if I scale down the technology, speed will improve. Scaling laws will tell you that speed at any cost will improve. At cost, we will see later, if time permitting. Okay. So if you are looking for a custom design, quality depends on individual designers. Now that is where my work is. I, I prefer to be an individual person rather than in a standard sale business in which our IP business, in which you just pick up few things, connect and hopefully it will work. Uh, this hopefully word is essentially because not everything works, so I only say hopefully. Of course, there is a synthesizing tools available, very strong tools are available these days, Cadence and Synopsis and Avant, they may name N companies. Uh, they all have produced fantastic tools, but to produce the tools, they must have studied what I am now teaching. Okay. Uh, so the way we normally teach our students and what students want to do, he just goes without even thinking a word about it. He said, design this, he will go and put some values and start iterating on that. This iteration sometimes helps or sometimes it works because you hit correct value day one and you say, oh, I got in a second's time. But that may be luck. Okay? Not every time you will hit the correct values and therefore it may take hell of a time to iterate and if the circuit is very complex, it will take much more time than what you anticipate. Uh, of course, there are many algorithms for gate size selection exist. One iterative approach, which is very famous in the literature, is called Telos algorithms. Uh, they assume uh, ca we can compute the delay along a path of gates and have a multiple gate sizes to choose from. Will yield good results for any path delay. This is Telos theorem is what Sproul, uh, Sutherland and Harris, uh, Harris of course was a teacher. He actually picked up these Sproul and Sutherland's method of logical effort. This Telos theorem forms the basis of logical effort. Uh, so what is Telos algorithm? Let's say you have four inverters. Uh, the last inverter you may say current gate and prior to that it's driving gate. Okay. So what you do, initially you choose all inverters of one size, 1x, 1x, 1x strength as if and it is driving a load of capacitance CL. Okay. 
CL. So what we do is we first put all of them one 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 and measure the delay from input to output. That is the time taken to charge the output load capacitor. And this is we call last delay. Then we take, we start the last driving or current gate. So last current gate, you increase the size to two x, and again measure a delay A. Okay, by same techniques. Then you reduce, you go back and reduce the size of current gate and increase the driving gate size, and you re-measure it and compare both A and B with the last gate delay, which is all uniform single gate delays. Okay, and compare. Which one is better? Okay, which one is better? So if you find B is better, second one is better. Use second one. If you find A is better, use A one. Okay. So basically, what we are saying, you keep repeating this process from the output side till the input side. Keep reduce, keep changing this, and see. Finally, average delay is where minimum you are getting. This is always possible. This is what iterative technique is all about. Okay. This is Stiller's theorem. So logical effort people actually use. If not, they didn't specifically said. I figured it out that they are using Tillow's theorem. So they themselves didn't say much in their book initially, at least. Now I don't know. And I figured out that this is only the method which they employed in a different name. Okay. Uh, now also the, the Tillow's theorem has very interesting point. They say, do we have to really calculate for every time the total path delays? No, we don't have to. We can actually fix a window where you want to optimize. Let you first and last as usual, and start only optimizing the window size, and you can probably get most optimal delays in this case. But if the chain is too long or the sizes are too big, then this issue may be very difficult every now and then to do simulations. Okay. But as a uh, you know optimum gate size happened to be 2.5x, it is found, and that choice of 2x or 3x normally leads to good results. This is what Tillos presented in their first paper. Okay. So, if you are using a rule of thumb, so even before you go to logical this, as a starter, you should always start with Tillos theorem, and you should say keep fan in low, as don't have too large input gates. Okay. Uh, often should be less than three. Keep fan out less than five, or preferably four, and that is why most of the circuits are designed for what they call fan out of four or F of four. And that's the reason why they find delays can be minimized along the critical path. The definition of a critical path, critical path is the delay where whichever path has a larger delay compared to others, we call that path as the critical path because that is going to decide your final delay. So along a critical path, the minimum delay is achieved if each stage delay is about. If delays of each stage is roughly equal, you find the average delay will also be lowest. Okay, and as far as possible. Use rise and fall times equal, okay, which will be much better for your design. Essentially, I am saying beta r, the ratio of n channel p channel beta, should be close to one. Essentially, I am saying w by r of p channel transistor should be double or two and a half times, depends on the mobility ratio of n channels. Okay. Uh, now, this is where I say, after giving you a lot of introduction. <laughs> I think I spent too much of time, but just was I thought it was necessary because you should not feel I, something these people did or something I am telling is great. Actually, it is derived from very simple thinking. Uh, it would be nice to have a back of envelope method of sizing gates transistor that would be easy to use and would yield reasonable circuits or reasonable results. Sutherland's Prowl Harris book Logical Effort Designing Fast CMOS Circuit introduces a method which they defined as logical effort. We'll attempt to apply this method during this course of circuits, during course to circuit that we'll look at. We we'll look at static CMOS application first because, though Professor Sharma said, many other uh, logical families are possible: dynamic, domino, zipper, NORA, name one, CV, uh, complementary logic. Many others are possible. Uh, this time permitting, I cannot complete all. At least I'll show you the method on static, and that's doable for any other logic family as well. So don't think it is restricted to uh, static CMOS, but it's easy to show. So the first thing we start is we give a model which we call gate delay model. What exactly I am talking is delay will be always be normalized. Let's say particular unit of a delay is tau. Okay, so we say absolute delay d ABS is essentially d into tau, where d is now 
a delay of a block essentially which multiplied by tau will give in seconds otherwise we will have, we'll have dimensionless d epsilon by tau is d and we use this itself as a d unit but if someone wants actual delay you tell me how, how much tau you have I will multiply by that ok so it is per unit tau is what we are calculating as our delays in all our calculation in reality if you need actual delay in nanoseconds or seconds then you must multiply by tau. Uh, tau essentially is the delay of a minimum size inverter 1 to normally as we said. Delay of logic gate is composed of two kinds of delays. One essentially we will call F, the other we will call P. Uh, the first uh, let me talk about F. F is called stage effort or also called effort delay. Effort is something with the word which we are now bringing in and P of course is a parasitic delay which essentially takes care of all other capacitances in this. Now what I am talking, the stage effort F which we say it is a delay due to the load. The driver is seeing a load and I am now looking for that kind of effort required to charge that capacitance in the same time. Okay. So we say it is a product of two terms G and H. Okay. It is a product of two terms G and H. Then of course if, uh, if you are looking for absolute delay then DABS, I think I am not conversant with this often so I forget, DABS is F plus P into tau and since F is GH, this is GH plus P whole bracket into tau. So what are this G and H? So now what Sproul and others have defined, they say G captures properties of the gate and H captures properties of the load. So we now actually broke this part into two. One we say what kind of gate you are using is essentially will give me G and how much is the load I am going to drive with reference to the input load is what I will call as my electrical effort and that I will refine as H. Okay. Give an example so you will see soon. So if you use a standard RC model which 0.96 RC kind of models, if you use lump models, uh, there also if you see a gate delay, some constant into load plus no load delay which is the parasitic delay, the function comes exactly same way 0.69 RC, 0.69 R is some kind of K, C is what you are getting K plus some parasitic delay which in C has two parts which may not be a function of K directly so that may be separated and we see it is same as what we could have done from the lump model accurately or otherwise by integration you may have got better results but if you are too many chain of circuits integrating methods are very difficult because you keep doing integration n times. Okay. So uh, K essentially depends on the pull up to pull down strength of P mass to N mass. It will help to see how RC model can be derived out of logical effort model. This is what essentially your RC model is. Okay. This is my pull up resistor, this is my pull down resistor, N channel, this can be switched on and off for P channel, this can be switched off for N channel. This is my input capacitance. This is my PI which is the parasitic capacitance of the gate and this is my actual load I am driving. Okay. I can calculate the absolute delay by I in R invert into C invert, C in is C inverter. We assume equal pull up pull down ratio, okay, uh, pull down R inverter and C in is C inverter. So tau essentially is some constant which is fabrication limited related and R in RC. This is like 0.69 RC kind of thing. Tau is not the no load delay of, and please take it, this tau is not the no load delay of the inverter. It is not the delay of 1x inverter dying 1x inverter since this includes the parasitic delay that did not include parasitics. This means that the determination of tau cannot be done via only delay, one delay measurement. So we say we will now choose a template circuit that is standard one block and we will then with reference to this block any other block I will compare and say how much extra. This is the effort I am talking. I have a standard delay available to me or standard block. Let us say an inverter which has a P channel twice the uh, size of P channel size double of that of N channel, a standard inverter and then I say okay this is my template compared to this if I use NAND gate or any other gate or any other block how much sizing I should change for same timing if I would have driven by the inverter. Okay. 
that's what say effort i'll use to do similar things so okay so input ct is the input capacitance of the template and we are going to scale the factor alpha increase in fact most cases uh, uh, rt is the pull on pull out resistance of the template cpt is the parasitic capacitance of the template cn is alpha times ct ri is rui rpi same we are used which is rt by alpha and cpi is alpha times cpt you can do this simple calculations from what professor sharma has talked and then we can actually calculate absolute delay as some constant of process r i into c out plus c p i substitute these values and you get an expression which is very interesting you can see k r t c t c out by c n k r t c p t and if you see my expression which i got for logical effort uh this is some way that fact is coming this is parasitic this is logical part this is essentially i am using the same formulations i am not doing very great differently from the two okay so we say if i compare tau gh plus p then tau is k r inverter c inverter previous definition g is rt ct r inverter c inverter h is c out by c in and parasitic delay is rt cpt divided by r inverter c inverter so you can see what we could have done by a lump model which is given in rebe's book is same as what logical effort people are thinking so we are not really going out of logical uh, thinking we are still following logical thinking the only reason why we switched over to this because it you know every time calculating rcs becomes very difficult and uh, time cumbersome cumbersome so we said okay can we do equivalent something and that's exactly what the effort was in this case so for example if you see a delay plots this is called normalized delay that is not absolute delay this is normalized delay and i am putting an effort electrical effort which is nothing but output capacity load divided by the input capacity uh, capacitance c out by c in and i have two two separate uh, blocks i use inverter and two input nand gates and we figure out and of course this green line is what we call one unit delay for an inverter which is called parasitic that p part is fixed for both so if you see this plus something that is inverter will follow this line as i increase c out my inverter delay rises that is obvious you know you have to take your longer time to charge the larger capacitance however if you are using a nand gate and have similar capacitances then you find the delay is even more okay delay is even more now this uh, essentially now trying to say that not only the delay increases with electrical effort but it also increases with the kind of gate i am going to use and therefore what we call as the gate delay or gate efforts okay so having introduced a lot of it uh, we can now start looking for logical effort for different gates very simple calculations as i said i have taken an example in which w is twice that of a p channel is double that of n channel lengths are same for almost all technology devices all same technology devices lengths are normally minimal lengths in case of digital so l is not shown l is always fixed okay so we say of course this two has been assumed as if the mobility ratio of your electron to hole is 2 if it is different use that number there so sometimes i use gamma gamma is here is 2 but it can be anything else as well so in the first simple case as i say it is p channel is twice that of n channel in widths so we say the logical effort of inverter is unity this is our template device template now with reference to this let's say i have a nor gate now if you if you are using a nor gate with the same equivalent resistance and capacitances we know since the two transistors are going to be in parallel for a nor function but i can't reduce the size i am already at the minimum so though, even though i have one, this both are one one for two inputs a and b however for p channel since two are going to be in series to make it equivalent of 2 1 upon 4 plus 1 upon 4 must be 1 upon 2 so i must actually double the size or in each in single inverter case to 4 from 2 to 4 now if i do this i can't reduce as i say uh, here one because that is the minimal i have 
but here i may have to, i'll have to do it four now because this was two here to make a series of the same equivalent i must double it so it is four so now i see the total capacitance of an inverter we assume it is something like called 2 plus 1 w1 plus w2 that is the net capacitance it will see c w into l c, c ox w into l and so you can say c ox w1 c ox w2 so it will add w1 plus w2 so the unit here sorry unit here is 3 and what is the unit per gate you can see from here for a say input a what is the capacitance it is going to show 1 plus 4 1 plus 4 w is 4 w is 1 so 4 same is for b 1 plus 4 so for per input the effort is now capacitance of 5 whereas inverter equivalent inverter has a capacitance of 3 so the ratio of the two 5 by 3 is the additional effort I will have to do for the same timings okay that is what I say I have made logical extra effort to have same timing so I calculated the size which would have been equivalent of my template inverter added the sizes now for each input and divided by the template value so I get the ratio of the two is additional effort so for a NAND gate to input NAND gate the logical effort is 5 by 3 we will show in a NAND gate little later maybe if I have somewhere I will show it first ok here is a NAND gate now you can see uh, same thing uh, now in the case of NAND function as Prof. Sharma has discussed well now N channel to have equivalent of 1 I need n channel to be doubled okay because otherwise the resistance will not be same discharge time will not be same so I want to have this both sides double of this so that in series of 2 means equivalent of 1 however in parallel I don't need because the path is something either this or this I don't need to double any of the p channel because I have alternate paths anyway available if a is on or b is on <coughs> a is 0 or b is 0 one of the transistors will be on anyway so I am not interested in now to find the size of P channel additionally because I have anyway parallel path for that. So I don't change the size of a P channel. I keep them two. However, I do increase the path of N uh, size of N channels, which is essentially two and two. So for each input now, this is two plus two, or for B two plus two. So the effort is four by three. So for a NAND gate, the logical effort is four by three logical effort for a NOR gate is 5 by 3 so all people in all design books say NOR gates are superior to NAND gates and now I am telling you here NAND gates are superior to NOR gates ok of course NAND gates are superior in some other sense also it will reduce the leakage paths and some advantages in low power so it is not that one does not see other aspects but essentially you can see what I am really talking about so I am now trying to find equivalent sizes compared to my template inverter and sign what is additional effort I will require to keep same timings. Okay. So okay, this is what I did. So if I have a random logic which is a complex gate A, B, C which can be you know it, this is essentially A dot B plus C bar at the, at the function. It is A dot B plus C bar is the function implemented so if I want to find its uh, each input uh, logical effort then I say okay for a input you can see from here this game has to be played well whichever has a parallel path keep same size whichever has a series path double or triple depends on if there are three in series put three times each of them if there are four in series put four times each of them whichever in parallel retain the same size so P channel 2 I retain for A but for B and C since they are going to be in series for a static CMOS I increase from double size 4 by 4 which is equivalent of 2 in series actually. For N channel since B and C are going to be in parallel I do not increase the size I, I do the reason why I do I could have done with 1 itself but I figure out that uh, if I do this 2 plus oh sorry it should be 1 1 ok it should be 1 1 it can no no it can be 1 1 but since a is in series 
I, I ought to make one total. So A in series B or C. So I must now make two B or C because then two and two in series. Thank you. Two and two series should make it one. So this has to be two. Though they are in parallel, but since they are series combination here, I need that to be again changed. So two plus two. And now for each input, I can say two plus two four. Four by three is the logical effort for A input. For B and C, two plus four six. Six divided by three, which is two. So for B and C input, logical effort is two. Okay. Obviously, for this kind of this. The net logical effort is much higher for a complex gate, which is true. Total G, if I bundle A, B, C together, the logical effort is four plus four by three, which is very very high, sixteen by three kind of thing. So you can see, as I increase the complexity in gates, my logical effort will keep increasing. That's what most important part in understanding. That if don't you know people say why not use uh, one simple complex gate and you get rid of many other decisions but if you do so you actually are consuming or actually are delaying the circuit or if you don't delay it then you will actually increase the sizes and therefore you will have a penalty on that the value of logical effort g depends on what gate is chosen the template of course is 1x inverter which is g equal to 1 choosing a different template gate will alter g value so it doesn't it's not that inverter has to be Permanently fixed as your template. If you desire to say two input NAND gate as your basic block, with reference to that, you can find the logical effort with that template. So it's not that we are forcing you to always choose inverter, but since it's much easier to appreciate and teach teaching, one normally chooses inverter, which is the basic block of any digital design. Okay. G values therefore captures the effect of varying number of inputs. And transistor topology on more complex gate than your template gates. More complex gate will require more logical effort to produce the same output current as the template gate, and will also present a higher input load because you are increasing the sizes. The input capacitance also will proportionately increase. Okay, the logical effort for a 1x NAND gate, 2x NAND gate, 4x NAND gate are all the same. the effect of extra load by the larger transistor is captured by what we now will say the other parameter which is called electrical effort or electrical parameter this electrical effort parameter h is used to capture the driving capability of gate via transistor sizing so you are increase the size so you know how much current you are driving so h essentially is the ratio of the output capacitance you just look at it to have a g values we change the value size of transistor so you are increasing c and so i am now want to show what is the additional or what is the value of output load to the input capacitive load which i have increased now so that ratio is additionally i am looking for and that number i am giving through word is electrical effort which i call c out by c in h as equal to h now Note that H for a gate will reduce as the transistor become wider. Since C in increases, C out is outside load, so which is fixed. Please take it. H becomes lower if C in rises because C out is fixed. C out by C in will actually reduce if the sizes of transistor increases. This is very interesting. Now the third part in my decision is the parasitic. Uh, note that parasitic delay. which is essentially we say no load delay is constant and independent of the size of a transistor as you increase the transistor sizes the capacitance of gate source drain areas increase also which keeps no load delay constant to measure p once p is known one can compute d and therefore one like to know p there are different methods what we do is we take two inverters driving us uh, two same size inverter drive each other and next time we use 1x inverter driving to a load of 2x inverter and measure the delay again and from that p can be two equations two unknowns so i can get the p value okay now i'll go so i i can find from for a given kind of logic i have i can always find what is the additional effort i'll require and if i know my g if i know my h and if i know p for that then i always get my d 
and if I now tau for a given technology or given inverters, I can always find the absolute delays. Okay, I don't have to find absolute delay any time because I am only comparing the two systems. So if D is higher or lower, I say okay that is better if D is lower. Okay, that's the way I will actually use designs. So for example, this is an n-way multiplexer. This is used in many circuit. Maybe another example I'll give you. Like you may be driving 64 drivers uh, buffers for some uh, circuit in many uh, logical memory blocks. Okay. So here is a one out of such selection if you have to do. So here is S1 to Sn are n blocks of multiplexer, okay. S1 is the select uh, signals and D1, D2, D3, Dn are the data signals, okay, which you want to pass on the common output line which is your C. Now we define, since I already given a theory that any series transistor put the size double because if there are two in series, so that equivalently it becomes what was for N channel and P channel. Any parallel you need not because then either path is available. So if you see this, these two S1 is selected here, this is actually forming the select path, either this is on or this is on, depends on if this is on, data is allowed to pass, of course data bar is going because inverting action. However, if S1 is 0, this block will be off. S1 0 means this is off, this is on but in since D, if D1 is 0 then this transistor will be on and 1 will be transferred. So what is I am transferring? The complement. C is the complement of D1 can be transferred. Is that clear? I repeat if D1 is 1, this transistor is on and if S1 is selected, so this is on, so these both are on means this node will go to 0 and the output will go to 0, so I have actually D1 bar transferred. If D1 is 0, uh, so is 0, then this transfer is off, no ground, this transfer is on and now if S1 is 0, S, uh, sorry S1 is 1, that is select has been done, S1 bar is 0, so this is on, this is on, power supply value goes here, that is 1, you have input 0, so transfer is D1 bar. So I am actually, however if S1 is 0, S1 bar is 1, both these two transistors are switched off, I repeat if S1 is 0, S1 bar is 1, both this P channel and this N channel are switched off, no power supply, no ground is possible, output floats, that means it is translated out, that means it's this input is not getting transferred, okay. At that time, I may, please remember S1, S2, Sn must be non-overlapping signals because at any given time contention should not occur. So if S1 is on, S2, S3, S4 all should be off or any one of them can be at a given time be on. That is what select will be. Okay. So if that is so, I can now have a n-way multiplexing and the effort now I look for it. The effort is, let us say this is a n. So first leave this n part, only see for one single this side. Uh, you can see from here 2 plus, okay, this gamma now is that what exactly I said. Gamma can be 2 or gamma can be 2.5 or in some cases it can be 3 if the technology is fantastic, okay. Depends on the technology use. Uh, depend, so I kept it right now gamma as a ratio because that's what Flaul has done, not that I have done, <laughs> okay. Uh, so, okay, so it is say 2 plus 2 gamma for 1. 2 plus 2 gamma for other, so 4 plus 4 gamma, please take it, 2 plus 2 and 2 plus 2, okay, so 2 plus 2 gamma plus 2 plus 2 gamma, that is 4 plus 4 gamma is total for S and D, okay, so and if there are undivided by its one effort which is standard template 1 plus gamma, okay, this gamma is 2 in earlier case, please remember gamma I use earlier is 2 and therefore it is 1 plus 2 is 3, so it is same. Gamma is, as I say, I repeat, it's the ratio of mobilities, it can be 2, 2 and half, 3 of water values. So if there are n such blocks, 4 plus 4 gamma upon 1 plus gamma is for 1 chain, n chains, n times. 4 plus 4 gamma is 4 n and therefore the logic, net logical effort of an n way multiplexer is 4n. Okay. So larger the size of multiplexer used, larger is the additional effort you will have required. 
Now, if you are looking for per input data, you only look for D1 or D2 or D3, then it is 2 plus 2 gamma divided by 1 plus gamma, which is essentially 2. So, I can find a logical effort for the n-way multiplexer. I can also find logical effort for many other gates, but some representative gates I show you, XOR gate for example. This is a interesting circuit, XOR gate. Please verify if you feel like XOR. Okay. Uh, it is not looking a standard XOR kind, but it has, it is an XOR. Okay. If you wish, you can try any of the input and check. Okay. Uh, the way I did it, here is A and B two inputs and the P channel is A bar B and parallel combination is A B bar the complement of that and here also there is a complement of that. This is essentially interesting XOR circuits. This is essentially derived from pass gate logic. Okay. So, it is a very simple but can be thought of how to do it. Okay. You can take any gate. These are given in the book, so I am only using that because if you are going to see a book someday, you should know what, what they are given. Okay. So, if I want to find the total logical effort, let us say first per input, per input is A, so 2 plus 2 gamma upon 1 plus gamma is 2. Bundle is both A and A bar is called one bundle, B and B bar is called another bundle. So, if I have a bundle, for B it is B plus B bar is 2 plus 2 gamma again 2, so that for a bundle of A or B, that is A, A bar and B, B bar, individually it is 2 plus 2, 4, but if you choose for all of them together, 4 plus 4, 8. So, the logical effort of an XOR gate shown here is 8. I repeat, 2 plus 2 gamma by 1 plus gamma is 2, for 2 of them it is 4 and for all other side again 4, so total logical effort for this XOR is 8. So, what is this going to tell us? If the logical effort is larger, delay is larger. So, now you have learned that complexity of gate has direct influence on your speed. Okay, that is what we have want to know. So, in last part of this, when I finish this part calculating, I will show you how do I then design? Should I use NAND gate in between or should I use what gates I should use so that overall delay in a path is minimal. So, for a n generalized XOR or parity gates, if there are n inputs, 2 to the power n 1 pull down transistors, n transistor in series each with width of n, 2 to the power n minus 1 pull up chains with each of width n times gamma and therefore total, this is same, more generalizing. What I did here, I am now re-generalizing n such sizing, total logical effort will be 2 to the power n minus 1 into n n plus gamma by 1 plus gamma or n square 2 to the power n minus 1. You can calculate 8 now from here. Okay. n is 2, so 4 into 2 is 8. A if you choose n equal to 2, 2 input XR, you can see n square is 4, 2 to the power 2 n minus 1, n minus 1 is 2, so it is 8. So, logical effort of a 2 input XR is 8. For n XR, n input XR, it will be proportionately n square 2 to the power 2 n. Similar way, I can calculate for other parity gates. If it is a three inputs, you can calculate by same logic numbers. Okay. Now, there is another case. Uh, there is another circuit which is given, which is asymmetric design with reduced logical effort. This, of course, is another XOR gate, which is ABC, three input XOR gate. Uh, I think Professor Sharma may talk or maybe time permit I'll this is also trying to save some logical effort and still getting an XOR function. Okay. This is a 3 input XOR. Uh, I think if I spend time then I think I will not finish. Maybe if time per I will come back and show exactly how it is XOR or maybe you can see this circuit and try yourself putting whether it is an XOR. And now if I do this, the logical effort for a 3 input XOR was 36. Now I have reduced it to 24. So, I can also play game in the placement of transistors and also can reduce my logical effort. This is called asymmetric, that is the upper size and lower is not identical. Okay. There is a majority gate, a uh, very famous gate. Uh, if the two of the three inputs are high, the output is low. This is of course majority bar you may say. If the two of the uh, 
two out of the three inputs is one, then the output is low. Uh, otherwise, output is high. This is what majority gate is. You can see from here, if A and B are one, both this transistor switches off. C is zero, let's say. A and B are one, this is off. But since A is connected here and B is connected here, both N channels are turned on, this node goes to zero and you can see output is zero. You can now see others are not transferring zero or if at all they may transfer zero. I repeat, but these two transistors switch on, okay, if these two transistors switch on, this output node goes to zero, pull down. So the x is zero, which is what I say, if the two of the, try any one of the two, any two inputs are high, the output is low, this is what majority gate is. Of course, as I say, it's a majority bar in the sense too high, output is low. I can do similar game, I can readjust the transistors and put little different logic, okay, which is called asymmetric uh, majority gate and now I see the logical effort has come down to 10. Okay. So the trick I am saying that not only you should look for the logical effort as you calculate but can also redesign the blocks and that is why there are so many ways the same logic is represented. The idea was to see that the logical effort is minimal or speed is larger or for the same speed sizes are not very high. These are the three things which we are actually looking for. Let's take a carry chain, another gate, um, how to generate output carry and again as I say it is out carry bar is made to available to you. If you see a typical uh, this uh, carry chain, these are two input G, G, K bar, K bar and this is your carry. So now you can see if G is 0, this is on, K is 0, so this is on, then since this is on, this is on, but then if C in is 0, this is on, if C is 1, this is on, so either this is working or this is working. Depending on C is 1, this is pulled down, so it goes to 0. If C in is 0, this is on and therefore 1 is transferred. Okay. And in since K bar is this, this is off, this is on, so it tri states out. So this does not then play any role because K bar is 1, so this is off, and G is 0, so this is off. So only C in is 0, 1 transfers, C in is 1, this transfers, and now look for other values of G and K which will tri state the device. That means this transistor will take over, it will tri state it out further. Okay. So I can calculate the logical effort for this carry chain. So for any one of them, C in logical effort for this is 2 plus 2 gamma by 1 plus gamma, so only 2. Okay. Uh, if you see for, uh, for G, it is 2 plus 2 gamma, 1 plus 2 gamma, this is 1, this transistor is 1 and 2. Okay. So total logical effort is 1 plus 2 divided, 1 plus 2 gamma divided by 1 plus gamma. Similarly for K bar, this is size 2, this is size 2, so 2 plus gamma upon 1 plus gamma is this, add all of this, so the net logical effort is 5 plus 5 gamma divided by 1, so logical effort for a one single carry chain is 5, if there are n such carry propagation going on, then you are n times of that. So when I am designing an adder circuit or I am designing any blocks, the first thing I should do if I am given some constraint on timing, then I should see what effort maximum available for me and therefore choose your architecture itself which gives you a minimal effort. Okay, that's what design is all about. What designers do? They what is the other method? You start putting a circuit, which most people do, give some sizes and let spice do all its job. Keep tweaking it till some time you say, Oh, I good, you know, acceptable. But that is how 24 hours you may run a spice simulator for a very small block if your initial guess is very wrong. So the best design is one which you get correct initial guess which is close to the actual value you are going to get. Put those values, that architecture and then actually do simulate on a spice which has a better models than anything. Because it will take exact value of all capacitance and everything. So it will give you appreciate your exact value of what delays you are looking for. Yes. Uh, sir, one doubt I have. Uh, uh, why don't we restrict ourselves only to total logical effort? I mean, why in each stages do we have to go for a 
you know effort on per input or you know per block yeah but when you are choosing an architecture uh, you cannot see the total logical effort unless you see individual block effort okay so the trick of showing is that if you can calculate the individual block effort then you can optim you can see okay if i change this this itself will reduce my total logical effort the optimization is for total logical effort but total logical effort is a part of these so i can not only if given an architecture i may only do total calculation is good enough for me but if i am also to change tweaking as i showed you from asymmetric to asymmetric i can play i would not have known where the actual effort is going on maximum so let's say one block gives highest this i will actually look for it can i reduce this one because then itself will contribute much lower to the net is that point clear to you so particularly i am looking for those block which are larger logical effort and i will if i can i'm not that every time i will be i'll try to see if i can get alternate architecture on those blocks at least which will give me lower overall logical so it's talking something out of 10 if someone is 6 hit 6 first rather than 2 to people okay but okay 2 to i may reduce one what else i can do but 6 i can reduce four i actually reduce to anyway okay so that why that's why the uh, sutherland sprawl suggested that we should calculate and also it is like a pedagogy i'm not just getting number 5 by not telling you so okay from where i am actually calculating is also shown both ways okay uh, another device uh, uh, another block which you use very often is dynamic latch uh, essentially it's a latch call it dynamic essentially you got say clock circuits 5 5 bar are the clocks if 5 is 1 5 bar is 0 so you can see this p channel is on this n channel is on at that time depends on the data if data is 1 this is off this is on this is on d is 1 q is bar inverted okay latch inverts okay you store you have another block it will store the opposite of it then if 5 is 0 uh, 5 is 1 uh, sorry 5 is 0 5 bar is 1 both these are off and since both are output is triseted therefore latched okay so that's the standard method of latching which is standard this latch is normally used actually this is some kind of a multi small multiplexing we are doing that's what we said we have a n way multiplexer is essentially latches okay so you can see this is how logically we will implement in in digital design we don't actually use gates or something we use only transistors in actual designs so this is the simplest way of implementing a latch or even a, it's called multiplex latch okay so i can see now if the effort is to be seen for d that is 2 plus 2 gamma by 1 plus gamma which is 2 and if you are looking for uh, select signal which is phi then it is 2 plus 2 gamma by 1 plus gamma again 2 so total logical effort for a dynamic latch is 4 there another element which uh, i think professor sharma likes very much uh, in the case of synchronous circuit we not all synchronous circuit are timed circuits and normally they use latches for their timing okay uh, delay elements or call shift register or whatever it is essentially you are using clock on that okay whereas in case of asynchronous circuits there is no clock going on okay the data itself is used for as if equivalent of a latch uh, equivalent of a timing so from the data the time is derived and therefore of course i am not saying asynchronous system do not have clocks but they are at least not synchronized with the main clock okay so in essentially there are many cases in which data has to be latched in a asynchronous system where there is no clock with you okay so here is a circuit which is called muller c okay very famous element and i think if i am teaching a digital course i always show this circuit to people because this gives an idea that latch doesn't have to have a clock for its latching action and that's exactly why i chose this uh one can see from here if you want to show the performance two n channel transistor in series two p channel transistor in series one is a please take it b is here a is here and this also can act like a latch okay if a is zero b is zero both n channel and p channel are switched off both are on output is one so let's say essentially saying b is selecting a or a is selecting b okay so it is essentially latching if both are zero uh, sorry if both are one one this is one this is this if a is zero and b is one opposite like 5 5 bar 
both all four transistors one of the chain will be switched off on either side and output will float okay so essentially it is like a latch okay so it's called muller c which was by the person who got it okay if i calculate the logical effort it is if there are n number of them n plus n gamma upon 1 plus gamma it is n square n is the number of stages you have okay now all this we talked so far uh how to get logical effort for a block okay so now i am going to use blocks in calculation of path delays that's not major job so initially i said okay i must first at least know what are the delays of each block i am going to use essentially their logical efforts and then i will know how much net delay i am going to get if i put them in a path so the first thing i do is is to estimate i have a n stage ring oscillator Okay. In, in ring oscillator, we know is odd number of inverters connected series and feedback back to this. It's a chain. So it's a n stage ring oscillator, and we know the logical effort of an inverter. We just so it's it's a template one. So G is one. Okay. Now we know what is electrical effort. We say electrical effort H is defined by C out by C in. But each inverter has driving the equivalent inverter, and there is no change in the capacitance from input to the output. so we say it is h is also c out by c in which is one for each this this is same as this okay we are connecting na so c out is same as c in okay so c out by c in is one okay the load for this is this but the input is here so you can say input to output ratio is one okay each inverter is a delay of one okay that's parasitic delay we say inverter has a parasitic delay of one unit okay so if i want to find the stage delay from 1 to n that is for one this gh plus p okay which is 1 n to 1 h is 1 g is 1 p is 1 so 2 so the oscillator frequency is 1 upon of course now d is not absolute so multiply it by tau so d tau is your that is 2 into tau is your net delay and we know by formula it is 1 upon 2d tau into n essentially is the clock frequency now this is the standard uh, load which you see in uh, all designs or rather you actually standardize your design based on these which is called fo4 loads okay so here is a one inverter which is driving four inverters so it is a four fan out for that so one can calculate the logical effort g is one because inverter is one i am calculating for this one okay g is 1 h out see now it has four four this so c out is each is c in but four times that so c out by c in is four parasitic delay is 1 so the stage delay is gh plus p 1 into 4 plus 1 which is 5 okay i am still not at my job here is my first work 